This truth can become your reality. How can it? You embrace it apart from what you see around you. Then you... Embrace the truth above what you see around you. Most people preach out of their circumstances and what they go through, and they form their doctrine based on what they go through. Basically, like if sickness, you know, they get sickness, they try and explain why it's okay and it's fine. Sickness is also God working. and Well, by His wounds we are healed. By His wounds we are healed. That is true. So God is not working with sickness. He's not using sickness to teach us. So we can't form a doctrine when we are sick. I'll say if, any, if I'm sick and I'm not and I will not be, and if I am, it doesn't change the truth. So because my, my doctrine or what I believe about God's word is not based on what I go through. It's based on what it says. And even if it's so far removed from my reality, I'll preach it there. Because how will I believe unless I preach it as it is? If Psalm, Psalms 91, listen to these few words and just see how radical it actually is. No evil shall befall you. No evil shall befall you. That means it's always, no evil shall befall you. It means that. Exactly what it says. Okay. So this truth is far removed from my reality. So I'll preach it until my reality becomes like the truth. Not changing what I believe to fit in with my reality. And that's where people have all these doctrines. You have to go through the desert uh, to enter the promised land. Unless you have a desert experience, you'll never see the promised land. Oh, yes, yeah. If you were not already seated with Christ in heavenly places, maybe I can agree, maybe we can talk about it. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places and you want us to go through a desert. Jesus already conquered the devil. We are more than conquerors in Christ. Uh, we have his power to minister. We... <laughs> Do you hear my, my preaching tonight? Okay, so I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. How must I now go through a desert to get to the promised land if Jesus Christ died in my place, suffered on my behalf, and purchased my freedom, brought me into this heavenly life, this heavenly family? And so I need to experience more of His life, His life, and rule more on this earth and in this life. If you think you must go through a desert, what normally happens when you go through that tough time, you just camp. Because you think this is part of, of what is necessary. And you think you have to go through it to actually, all those teachings. Oh, you got to help us, but not. <laughs> help one. <laughs> oh, I love the truth. And I love it above all. And so, unadulterated, just truth, just as it is. Psalms 91 will never change. Even if I say you don't have to go through a desert, then immediately we think of the times that we heard we should go through the desert. But Psalms 91 says nothing about going through the desert. Just experiencing the life of God. Psalms 23, sorry, we're on the way there. Here's the context again. Pastor, do you say we will never suffer? Um, we shouldn't, but we do. <laughs> because we live in a world, I'm, I, this is reality talk. We do. People, we live in a fallen world with effects and negative stuff and da 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 da. Until we see the truth and embrace ourselves and uh, embrace the truth so much that it becomes our reality. So, so I'm not saying people don't go through stuff. I'm just saying there is a new life in Christ that is above the things of this world. And I'm, I'm not every day there experiencing the fullness of it, but surely that's where I'm heading. In, in manifestation. So, the, if I preach the truth, the truth is I'm already there. Reality is, I'm experiencing more of His glory daily. This is good news, what I'm sharing here. I say it's going to get better and better if you keep on walking with Jesus. 
victory on every side. <laughs> you will face the realities that other people face and you will just say, <laughs> I know my God, peace. Be still. <laughs> still. Then people will say, I thought I should have gone through this storm. And you say, no, I already calmed it for you. Thank you. <laughs> Look to Jesus now. That's where your deliverance came from. <laughs> Look to Jesus. Okay. But Pastor, you have to go through the desert to go to the promised land. We are already in the promised land. We are actually not in the promised land. We are in heaven. Far better. Seated with Christ in heavenly places. If I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, do you think I can suffer next to him on the throne? Will he allow me to suffer there in this life of glory? Okay. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still and restful waters. He refreshes and restores my life. For his name's sake. Yes. <laughs> Though I walk. You haven't heard it. He leads me. He is my shepherd. He makes me lie down. He refreshes. He restores. Though I walk. He didn't lead you there. He didn't lead you there. But he said even there I will be with you and I will protect you. Thank you Jesus. Then he says, you'll prepare a table before me, even in the presence of my enemies. Then he says, surely, or only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life, and through the length of my days, the house of the Lord, and His presence shall be my dwelling place. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Psalms 23, the house of the Lord, His presence. Not the church, the house of the Lord, His presence, shall be my dwelling place. No evil shall befall you. And this is what I always say. People, if there is Psalm 91 and it says, no evil shall befall you, that remains true. Scripture will not contradict Scripture. You go and you find the context of the Scripture you wonder about and you allow God to teach you the truth. But if Psalm 91 is there, you can't cut it out. It's going to be there and it's going to stand there forever until someone believes. I always say, why will he put it in the Bible if it's not for me to believe? Take fully and just take it and run with it. It would have been not in here. It must, it's already too late. I already saw it. After I saw it, it's already going to be part of my life. And I'm going to believe it. That no evil shall be fallen. Okay, so you go through stuff in life because of a fallen world you live in. Death came in as a result of sin. Romans 5 verse 12. So why go, does Christians go through suffering? Why is there sickness upon even believers? I explained to you out of communion how we actually also can experience the benefits of the cross versus what the world goes through. We can also get health because of the body of Jesus broken for us. But the, the reason is because of sin that came into the world. That's the only valid reason. There's no other valid reason for suffering of any sort. When, when even in the beginning in the creation, He made everything good. He made everything good. God made it and it was good. Very good and good. <laughs> and so there was no, no sin, no destruction, no death, no killing. It came in after because of sin. But Jesus came and he died on the cross for sin and its effect. Now we are the kings that rule with Christ because we receive the gift of grace and righteousness. We rule with Jesus. And as we see Jesus for who he is, we see the truth about who we are in Christ. We start to live as the manifested sons of God. The whole creation was waiting for us. Unless we are waiting for the bus to go to heaven. <laughs> creation is waiting for you. You can't wait, keep on waiting just to go to heaven. There's an assignment here. God wants you to. You, you are here for a reason. Creation waits for you. Creation, the whole of creation waits for you. So you can see that you are a son of God. 
What, how will creation see that when you start ruling in creation above certain things? So that's why I say we suppose even to speak against the winds, calm the storms, heal the sick, raise the dead. And we do it, and we do it more, and we go for it boldly, and it's increasing, on, increasing in our lives daily. That's where we are now. <laughs> but the truth remains the truth. And so Psalms 23 says, He leads you, He leads you, He leads you, He leads you, but then you walk <laughs> through the valley. Like, though I walk, it doesn't say He led you there. All three verses says, He leads you, He leads you, He leads you. Verse 4, though I walk. God cannot lead you there, and He will not lead you there. What shepherd, if He's called a good shepherd, will now purposefully lead His sheep amongst the wolves, to teach the sheep. Listen, a sheep is so defenseless. Brother, if you have sheep, you look after them, they're not going to stand against the predator. They will just stand and be eaten. The Lord calls us sheep for a reason. Not goats, sheep. Not cattle. Not buffaloes, but sheep. <laughs> we are defenseless. And so, here's the good shepherd. Now on purpose, he leads you through the valley of death. Is that a good shepherd? No. Like taking his sheep there where the wolves are. Like on purpose, to see if the sheep can stand up for themselves. My brother, that shepherd will be fired. <laughs> Instantly, if he's a shepherd, oh, lost his job, shepherd. He's no longer the shepherd. The, those days, the shepherd walked ahead, not like we do. Like I, I grew up, we, we chased the sheep. <laughs> Try and get them. Like Those days, they just walked ahead. Imagine that shepherd had a grin on his face. <laughs> I'm going to lead my sheep through this valley of death. I will see how strong they are. I will see how strong they are. Maybe they're going to build some character in this place. Yes, yes, yes. the thing. When you, when you go out and you see an accident, you always find an ambulance there. Right, with paramedics. So your assumption will be wrong when you say the ambulance always causes accidents. What is the paramedics there for? To help. God is always present when people go through a difficult thing. But He's not the one that's causing it. I try to explain God is light, there's no darkness in Him, He's good, there's not evil, and He has... This is who He is. And especially after the wrath of God was poured out on Christ. <laughs> there's no, no problem there. To believe that God, we can only expect good things from God. Okay. But pastor, I've heard that my faith must be tested. All right. Okay. Let me just see that. Okay. So let's go and test our children a little. And just see if they, you know. God does not test your faith. Your faith gets tested by the world you live in. Jesus! But God is not orchestrating the test. He's not overseeing the test. And He's no hand in the test. Except to help you pass the test. <laughs> it's like you go to um, university. You get your lecturer and he gives you a test. Right? Now, imagine you have someone next to you that knows all the answers. And he's allowed to help you. That is God. Because he already conquered the world. John 16. Let's go there. Jesus! So Jesus went through everything already and is with you to help you in the test of life. Listen, your faith gets tested by the circumstances you live in and by the world you live in. But God is not the author of the test. 
Thank you, Jesus. This is very good. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. It says here, um, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. Let's just look at this. Jesus said, I've told you these things so that you might have peace in me. Now this peace is a total peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Shalom, peace. Total peace from God. He says, in me you will have peace. Listen to this. In the world, there's two places. In me you will have peace, but in the world you will have tribulation, trials, and frustration. But be of good cheer. Why? For I have overcome the world. <laughs> okay. I have overcome the world. That's why you can rejoice. People of God, the only way you can rejoice in suffering and trials and tribulation is the very thought that Jesus overcame these things on your behalf. And if you find refuge in Him, you'll have perfect peace. In Him you will have peace. In the world trouble, but in Him peace. In the world, are you in Christ? Then you have peace. And His will for you is peace. Should you find yourself without peace, experiencing His peace in Christ, and you are living in this normal world, be of good cheer, He overcame the world on your behalf. <laughs> okay. Now James 1 says, Rejoice when all kinds of suffering comes your way, all kinds of trials, and he explains that. He says, Consider it joy when all kinds of um, trials come your way because it produced this and it's all those things, right? It says, Because your, it says your faith gets tested or is tested. It doesn't say, have joy when I bring all kinds of trials. It also doesn't say, have joy when I allow all kinds of trials. It says, rejoice when it comes. Why? Because there's one reason you can rejoice. Yes, Paul and Silas in, in jail, praising God. Are they rejoicing because they are in jail? Or are they singing because of the God they know that is able to do all things? And the moment they started praising God in their difficult circumstances, not because of the circumstances, but because of who He is, they got delivered. Thank you, Jesus. And so we rejoice not because of suffering, we rejoice because of the God we know. And we know what, he, what His plan is of deliverance and salvation. And the way He's going to take us out. The only way you can rejoice in suffering is if you know God is able to take you out. You can never rejoice in suffering if you have this hopeless feeling of... Whoa. Well, how will you rejoice? How, how can anyone rejoice that's being martyred now for Christ? How can they rejoice because of that? They rejoice because of Jesus and because of who He is. You understand? And their faith in Christ, no matter what. So there's things that are in this world, but surely God has conquered the world. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so, Martyrs, are you saying that we're supposed to, you, after what Jesus went through, let's just consider what we have believed up till this point. If Jesus was beaten, bruised, ripped apart, have you seen the passion of the Christ? Just an just totally ripped apart, beaten, nails in his hands and feet. Hang on, he hung on that cross. After that suffering that he went through, does it even make sense? To think you should add your own suffering to his suffering. Does it even make sense? 
Not at all. And the only reason is because we under, misunderstand just certain basic scriptures. Just certain basic scriptures. And there was also a time of great tribulation. And Jesus was speaking to the Jews. He said these things. He said, he said all these things will happen to this generation. Who's, what generation? The generation that was standing before him. And so the Jews were persecuted and they were the people that crucified Christ. And Jesus said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I wanted to gather you under my wings, but you would not. And so even he wanted to protect them. But they stood aside and they received that great persecution that we read of, the great tribulation. All of those people that were standing there we're in that, in that great tribulation. If you read it, you see the whole fall of Jerusalem. You see all those things and you see the sufferings that those people went through. But now if you don't understand that, you obviously will think that we should go through the same thing. That was the end of the old and the beginning of the new. And the Jews and the people that crucified Christ and they... they Listen, Jesus went to the cross for the world's sin. I'm not saying it's the Jews' fault. I'm just saying that was the end of the old agreement between God and the Jews. I'll teach you more on that one day. <laughs> but just for today. In Christ, you'll have peace. And so even John 16, even if you don't understand, it's referring to the great tribulation. Let's just say, in the world, we still have trouble and trials. But be of good cheer, he overcame. And so we are living in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. So I said, James 1, we only rejoice because of God that is able to, to, to save and deliver and heal. Right? So what is then, should we go through suffering? Should we go through all of these things to um, experience the glory of God? We should look to Jesus no matter what. Whether it's going bad, whether it's going good, whether it's going very well. And in the face of Jesus, we are transformed. I really prayed for suffering once. Uh, I was a student. I went to a garden. I said, at the garden where I used to spend time with God. I said, Father, my friends told me that if you're really a Christian, you will have persecution. But at this time, it's going so well with me. Will you just send me some persecution what I prayed. And so he didn't answer that one. <laughs> Why? Because it's against his nature. Just like I want, don't want to hurt my children, God doesn't want his children to be hurt. There's no rejoice. God does not rejoice in any suffering that his children go through. He will deliver them anytime, but it takes faith in Christ from any person, whether the person that's in the situation or, or another Christian, why, why do I say that? Peter was in jail. The Christians prayed. The angel appeared. Peter was taken out. But it was just after they actually killed James. And who's the other one? James and someone. They just killed James. They just killed him. Peter was next. Christians prayed. Peter was delivered. So, when we pray, that's why I pray for the persecuted church. I pray that they will be delivered. Not that they, oh, God bless them, they're in a better place. Well done, the persecution helps them. You know, it's easy to say from this side. <laughs> to have all our nice doctrines from this side. You go and be in jail, be persecuted, and then say, ah, oh, it's a good thing. <laughs> it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing at all. God is not rejoicing in the suffering of His children. You that are evil knows how, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more your Father in heaven. And then James 1 got me. They, they, when I prayed for persecution, God said to me, go to James 1 verse 16. Let's read this verse. It's not a long one. <laughs> James 1 verse 16. When I ask God for persecution, this is His direct answer. 
I heard it, I heard it so clear. Read James 1 verse 16. I had no idea what, what was in James 1 verse 16. I had no idea. Then, uh, let me just find James 1. Verse 16. <laughs> James 1 verse 16. Do not be misled, my beloved brethren. Verse 17. Every good and every perfect gift comes from above comes from the Father of light, in whom there can be no variation or shadow cast by His turning. Every good, every perfect gift comes from above. No suffering comes from God. No suffering is allowed by God for a purpose. God wants to save you, heal you, deliver you, and set you on high. And He wants to bring His glory to your life. Jesus went through the suffering so that you can have the glory. Your suffering will not add to the effect of His suffering to give you the glory. 